This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorgat Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios. I almost said Mayhem Studios because it is pure mayhem tonight. Uh, we're having a lot of fun. It is the end of the year spectacular. It is uh, our Christmas edition, our, our end of the year edition of Awesome Cast. And, and I wanted to make sure we had plenty of people here uh, to join us, to have their opinions of the year and everything. And it turns out... All of them said yes to come, and they're all here or remote. I haven't even counted how many people are with us tonight, um, but I know how these usually go on the Mayhem show, so I'm hoping it goes a lot better. Listen, we have all this room over here. Look at all that room behind uh, uh, John Carmen and, and Bobby Cherry, and, and we wanted to fill it with people and try to do a show here. Uh, but down the line, let's 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 let you know who's here for you guys on the audio that can't see this this mass of humanity. Um, <laughs> first of all, John, John Chilla. <laughs> That's me. How's it going? John, uh, you, you did a really good job of filling up the space. Yes, I did. Yes. Yes. We, we just, yeah. Uh, he's the uh, gadget guru over at Big Bank International Esquire. Thank you. I don't know, I, 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 I didn't I don't know, know if you wanted to, to the next Oh, yeah, I guess or... I did a quick version. Yeah. Brian Crawford, of course, of the River's Edge, where we're, of course, over there representing on the stream as part of the River's Edge Network. On a half an hour of sleep, baby. Woo! Oh, man. Oh, man. Of course, Ron Krause, a regular contributor as well, also does things at Big Bank International Esquire. (laughs) And let's see. Let's see. Who's over here sharing a mic? Uh, We got John Carmen. Nope. Hey. He's back again. I'm here. I'm not on the couch this time. No, no. No, they're not allowed anymore, apparently, after last time. Oh, but you put me next to this guy. Yeah, Bobby (laughs) Cherry is back with us, and I love his multi- uh, cultural representation of the holiday season with that sweater. It's the first night of Hanukkah. I had to. There you go. We're still not even sure if he's Jewish. No, no. We're still trying to figure that I out. I asked if he was 50-50. So. <laughs> that was my guess. Bobby doesn't know. Bobby doesn't know. And, of course, online, every from all across the country, practically, first of all, Cynthia Klosky of Shift Collaborative joining us. <laughs> Well, hello. How are you? Hey. And also, Jim Loke gracing us with his presence from Washington, D.C. Where... I love how Cynthia said hello. Like that. <laughs> that was good. And geez, you I can probably you... still let you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you, you, you stepped right off of off air, which seems like a, 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 a norm for you anytime you're on the show with us. Yeah. Yeah. We just got off air at uh, 6.58 and I ran downstairs and, and uh, I'm going to get back on it. Uh, eight o'clock there you go so he's gonna have a hard out so we're, we'll make sure we get him also patreon supporter mike fedora joining us as well hey guys it's an honor to be here welcome welcome <laughs> welcome um let's see uncle crappy of the uh post gazette newspaper I'm glad I decided to do this from home because it's like I would be standing out on the sidewalk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you saw they were standing. Up in there. They were standing on the sidewalk earlier, um, um, smoking outside on the internet. So there, there was that. Uh, and finally, Will Rutherford. Some may know him as DJ Lunchbox of a, another kind of podcast that maybe he used to be on, and also Panel Riot. Yes. Hi, everybody. Nice bike. Thank you. <laughs> I don't ride it. No, <laughs> I do not just ride for it. Show. It's, just, it's, an, it's an aspirational bicycle. Jeez, yeah, it's just screen. for looks. That's fantastic. Honesty, Honesty <laughs> yes. Um, but anyways, thank you all for being here as we uh, celebrate the year and awesome and tech and everything else going on and in these this geeky world. I'm sure we're going to touch on a lot of it here. Of course, please check out everything at AwesomeCast at the i uh, on AwesomeCast.com, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. I'm trying to do a quick version of this since we have so much to get to. Uh, and of course, we're streaming. We'll see you after the new year. Streaming live at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, live at AwesomeCast.net and on the Facebook. Thank you, of course, to the River's Edge that carries us every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. as well as the 405media.com that carries us every day at 9 p.m. I'm sorry, 9 a.m. Pacific Time. 
noon Eastern time if you want to get your awesome cast there. And thank you to our Patreon supporters, like Mike Fedor, who's joining us here on the line uh, for tonight. And uh, Matt Weller at the Coffee Club level. You guys enjoy and support the show. Help keep the lights on in the studio. Patreon.com slash awesome cast. Now I'm out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> so um so we usually do the awesome thing of the week and and i thought uh we'll do an awesome thing of the year uh this episode with everybody and we'll go down the line and i was hoping i'm, I'm sure some of you will probably cross over a little bit so please speak up of, uh, to at least you know add to that or whatnot as well uh so i think we should start with chilla because that's usually where i start so, we, so we're like, doing awesome thing of the, of the year. year, and then a prediction, or are we doing no, awesome? Uh, everyone does an awesome. Thing everything everybody does. No, no, we're doing one segment first, and then we're doing the other segment. Okay. <laughs> so coming up, yes. <laughs> so coming up after the break. Yeah, after the after the break, where we talk about slice on Broadway, then we'll get into the predictions. Okay. Okay, I got it now. Cool. So my awesome thing of the year is the Apple AirPods. I am aware for those of you listening, watching, etc., that they were. The guy right behind you that just bought an Android phone. Yeah, they, they did. They did come out last year in December, um, but I didn't get them till earlier this year. I think I got them in late February, early March, because they were on, I think, an eight week delay for delivery at the time. Um, huge fan of the devices. I have a multitude of headsets. Um, yeah, in you, various you, places. I have you, whether they're been, wired, Bluetooth, etc. You've been my go-to for like you know wireless headphones. Yeah, I think I picked the wrong one. <laughs> by the way, they're by to me they're they're by far from a battery life perspective, um, mic perspective, uh, carrying case, not having to have a dongle between them, etc. Mm -hmm. um, they're by far. By far, my, my and they're they're also you forgot beer. magical as it they says on their website. Yes. So from from the from the way they pair to the sound to everything that they offer, I know they're not like studio gear quality of sound, mm -hmm. but to be able to stand on the train platform and wait for the T and be able to still hear, um, they're perfect. What's a dongle? What's a dongle? <laughs> What isn't a dongle? <laughs> <laughs> um, Google it. <laughs> oh no! It was a safe search that, by the way. While you're <laughs> I was just thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Crawford, Rivers Edge. What's your awesome thing of the year? Okay, so everyone knows who, who's seen me on this program before that I have been living for the last three years. Well, well, first off, let me preface this that one of our chatters, their awesome thing of the year, is something that was inspired by me. So let's see if I can go and, and do this again. My awesome thing of the year, and you know, I've been walking in this technology desert for the last three years. As somebody who, who operates a streaming radio station. A technology company, yes. yes. So in the last two weeks, I went from a $100 throwaway phone to the Samsung Note 8. And then when I was there, the guy convinced me to come back and get the iPad Pro. And then I went out and bought the watch. <laughs> and I got the pen. Oh, jeez. And I've got the Dex dock on its way. So you might think one of those might be the awesome thing of the year, right? You would be wrong. On Amazon, I bought this nifty little bag <laughs> <laughs> that has so many great compartments. I've got a spot right for the iPad. It fits the iPad perfectly. And then in this bag, there's a slot for my cell phone. There are, there's another slot here, a flap here. And on the other side, it can hold all of my little credit cards. I can keep my moisturizer in there. The Vicks Vapor Brub, which you do not leave home without Vicks. And then on the front, I have a spot for all of my chargers. It Jeez. even has a spot for the pen in that first flap. Chilla, he's beating you on the bag tech right oh, now. Oh, wait. On I already back, saw the label. I'm ordering it right now. On the back. <laughs> see, again, two first. On the back side, I can even fit my microfiber cloth so I can continue to clean my screens. And yes, I know this is basically a, a man purse, but if it I takes... I tried not to comment when I first saw it. If it takes a purse to keep me from dropping this $1,000 iPad mm -hmm. and losing this $100 pen, then it's the best $20 purse money could buy. Is, what, it, the, is it the vintage... That is my awesome thing of the year. What, what is it called again? It's the Kenox Vintage Multifunction Canvas Shoulder Bag it Business comes, Messenger... Jeez. Yes, it comes in two different Field colors bag. as well. It comes in tan, I believe, and then... This blue color here. Honestly, best $20 I've spent, and I 
have not dropped the iPad. I'm such a klutz. I have walked backwards off of a box truck before. I have tripped <laughs> off a loading dock. And Jeez. I've fallen from uh, countless things. Let's, uh, I've actually stubbed my toe so hard, I split the toe open and spun in a somersault. But the pavement. iPad is safe. But the iPad is safe, <laughs> thanks to my Merce. Can you tell he does a lot of commercials on his network? <laughs> <laughs> we actually have a question from the chat room on that. Oh, really? Would the bag be as awesome if you didn't have all those gadgets? No, no. The reason why it's awesome is because it literally has a spot for everything. And what's amazing is I have nothing extra. I, I haven't cluttered it because everything has a specific spot. Mm. And I've been very good so far about keeping everything to a specific spot and keeping everything intact. So, yeah, if it wasn't for the iPad, I never would have bought this bag. So, so no. Definitely. It's still got the VIX if you're heading to a rave. Oh, you've got to have the VIX. <laughs> now, see, I always, at wintertime, I have this giant coat that I wear, a pea coat. And it's basically my Merce because I have all sorts of crap stuffed in there. Uh, yeah. Hand sanitizer, nose spray, VIX. Now it's just all migrated to the bag. There you go. It's consolidated your life. It has. It's, it's, honestly, it's made me so productive, too. It's great. I That's just awesome. ordered one. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Two in a row. There you go. Kraus. Crazy Kraus, what's your awesome thing of the year? Well, this will oh, be... Oh, let's go. Point that at you. This might be a little comfort, controversial, but go. I'm going to say my Pixel 2 XL. Okay. Um, since the 8.1 update, um, they activated the... Um, John, what's it called? The... AR core? visual core which is basically helping with the photos and the ar and everything i was showing you earlier some of the new ar things that you can do with the phone um while i was in new york city i took many many pictures with this phone and i was very pleased mm -hmm. with how those shots turned out it's actually kind of crazy when you think that this is just a phone that i'm taking pictures with uh and i'm very happy with it i'm you know i know there were lots of bad press and everything and when i bought the phone as i talked about on the show i was very hesitant but now i'm very happy uh, with the decision i made so. i was showing a video this is all the <laughs> ar stuff and, yeah. and this is and we were testing it it basically looks like it there was like a there there's like dropping stormtroopers and r2d2s into into scenes and uh you know, it was people cosplaying, and then there, there you have a BB-8 that they're they're interacting with and everything. Tie fighters. I know you said you want to put take a tie fighter over the city at some point too. Yep. So actually, it, John came up with a really good idea in mm -hmm. one of our buildings for Big Bank International. <laughs> we have an outdoor patio. We're gonna have some fun very oh, very soon. Pictures so look, to come look for soon. the new Star Wars. Awesome cast uh, <laughs> yeah. series coming soon. The pictures are going to be very fun so very soon. That's awesome. That that makes me... Now, I know there's... Now, Missy, wasn't there... What, what were you guys using that you had Star Wars things? Was that Snapchat that was popping up? Yes. That was... So that... So that okay. So it's not yes. entirely Google. Uh, uh, we, we were but... having lots of fun with that at the Comic-Con this weekend. Mm -hmm. Yes. Awesome. So Because I know I saw the little... I don't know what it is. The thing that hangs out with Chewie and the... Uh, in the Star Wars trailer, the, like penguin like, yeah. kind of looking. Thing. Do we know what yeah. the heck he is yet? I don't I, think we know what he is yet. Uh, it's no. a porg. I <laughs> knew he was going to. I knew that our panel riot, uh, representative would have, would would come up with that. So, all right, uh, I'm going to go to our digital friends here. Uh, well, hey, since you spoke up last, uh, 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 Will, uh, a panel riot. What's your awesome thing of the year? Sure, sure. Um, my awesome thing of the year is um, it, it's a really interesting idea. Uh, not necessarily the thing itself, but the concept. And I, uh, I'm interested to see where it takes social media. Um, it's, uh, I got it from an article I read in Wired. Um, Rob Bichesa, I said that wrong. Um, he's the coder and managing <laughs> editor of Boing Boing. And uh, he released this. It's a stripped down blogging tool called Text or txt.fyi. And the general idea behind it is that. Um, it has no social mechanics whatsoever. There's no like, no share, no comments, nothing, nothing whatsoever. The only way that people can see what you write and post on this is if you give them the URL to it yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's, it's, it's interesting as a concept in practice. Uh, there's not a ton of uses and it's certainly, you know, you can't monetize it. There's no, um, uh, where I wrote it in my notes, uh, you can't, there's no ads, you know, there's, there's really no way to monetize it unless pe you get people to sign up for it, which is also very unlikely. Um, and the article described that as antiviral design, which mm -hmm. I thought was very interesting. Um, 
Now, if something absolutely extraordinary was posted, people could share around the URL and it could actually go viral. But I, I just find the whole thing interesting, taking social media and completely doing a 180 on it. And I'm curious to see if this gains any traction. There's another platform called um, saidso.me, um, which does something very similar. And I, I think, you know, of a lot of the things tech-wise that I've seen this year, uh, this one stuck with me the most. That's awesome. We, we did talk about uh, text.fyi. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, the said so dot me is new. Is, is it any different, or is it pretty much doing the same thing? Uh, I, I think it's it's basically along the same lines as the uh, as the first one. I, I don't know if you saw. We talked about it on the show. But did you see the um, choose your own adventure that they were using with text dot um, with, with the other text one? I have not seen that, I, but it, I uh, it, but I'd be interested to look it up. Definitely, um, if you look in the about, since there's not much on there, uh, there's a, there's there's a little like highlight of things that people can do with it, and it says you know choose to your adventure, and it goes to um, a, a very short choose your adventure that you can do. So mm -hmm. it's, 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 it looks like I it's thought fun. it was. Um, they mentioned in the article that um, uh, we'll just call him Rob because I can't say his last name. <laughs> um, yeah, we had trouble uh, he, too. He was uh, doing some debugging, and he discovered that someone was using text.fyi to write letters to a deceased relative, oh, wow. which uh, I thought was fascinating. Um, maybe it, maybe it'd be a journaling application. Who knows? But I just think it's a uh, it's a really great idea and a fun experiment. Nice. I, mean, I think you know something like Twitter. You know, it was a very limited thing that people found reasons to use, right? And and I think this kind of goes back to that kind of idea. It's interesting too because we were, mm -hmm. when we were talking about it on the show, I didn't think about it till afterwards. But if you lost your links, like if you don't save what you, you posted, have no idea. It's like it's gone. it's gone. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If Twitter and social media is reaching out and and reminding yourself that you're not alone, then uh, saidso.me and txt.fyi is reaching out and reminding yourself that you are alone. Which is fascinating. Wow. <laughs> Jeez. It's bleak, sure, but it's interesting. <laughs> uh, Jim Loke, what's your awesome thing of the week? Um, year? Well, uh, I, think year. It's, I think it's Rob Bashiza. I think that's the name. Bashiza. Ah. Uh, I don't know. Just, just look at that. Ask, right, the, so, ask, ask the guy that says hard names all day. <laughs> yeah. um, so I think, you know, I was going through it. I know in, in years past, I've gone with, with, with tangible technological items. And I think this year I decided to mix it up a little bit. Um, I really think what's been amazing is how, and I'm shocked it's taken this long, but, but I'm going with, um, with HQ, the, the, the quiz app, because think about it. It has taken this long, you know, in, in the 10, 11, 12 years that smartphones have gained critical mass, that there has not been some sort of, of platform that's allowed people to compete interactively with each other in, in, in a, in a real-time format. But it's also taken some, some cues from TV where you know you're, you're playing a game at 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock every night. And, and, you know, I think it's amazing. I mean, I, I, it's, it's gotten buggy as more people play it, but, but it's really um, – it's caught – uh, really a, a broad cross section of, of appeal out there. There's a lot of people playing it. There's a lot of people um, planning their days around, you know, that, 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 that 10 to 12 minute span it takes for you to, to get through a round. But um, I will say that I think, you know, it, it, will it go the way of Pokemon go where, where, where people are obsessed with it for a while and it, it goes away? Well, I mean, I think that's going to be hard to tell because we all have pretty short attention spans, but I think the developers um, have, have done a good job, not just, just, just getting it out there, but the fact that they've created this this measurable buzz um, around a free app, which you don't see a whole lot of. No, it, this reminds me of because uh, I remember when Microsoft was trying to do these interconnected uh, kind of games and apps, like with your little avatar. Like there was kind of a game show. Um, oh, what was the one? Like the one in ten thousand. One 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 versus a hundred. Yeah, one versus a hundred, and you were playing that yeah. against a bunch of other people at one time, and it was in blocks of like like fifteen minutes or thirty minutes and everything like that. Right. It sounds like it's kind of familiar to that concept. Yeah. 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 I I think what's been you know there was a big article that came out. I guess I, I can't remember exactly who was doing a profile on the host. This the stand up comedian Scott Rogowski, and and the. The developers, the the I, I don't know if you, I don't know if you call it developers, but the backers of the app were so staunchly against 
you know, peeling back the layers and, and showing you the guy who's just basically reading, you know, reading the questions out there. And that in turn, people around, I didn't hear about it before, but I saw the blow up about that article, mm -hmm. which ended up going through, but that gained a lot of buzz for it, which wasn't there before. So again, what it's going to come down to is, is it sustainable? Um, at what point do you start throwing in advertisements, which I think you got to because, you know, you have 300,000 people competing for about a chunk of anywhere from one to $1,500, which, you know, I think in the end, it looks like people walk out of there with maybe about a hundred dollars, you know, you split the, split the prize many ways, but you know, it's, I know back in 2000, 2001, ABC was trying to do when millionaire was big and they were doing this enhanced TV where you were able to play along with who wants to be a millionaire. But you know, it, that was, a, you know, you, that still required people to get in front of their computers. You didn't have it at the palm of your hand where, you know, I'm, I'm on the Metro here. And I see that a game's about to start. I can jump in at any time. Yeah, yeah. I want to sign in. It makes you uh, use your phone number here. Um, I don't know if you mentioned it. I see from this one article that's from uh, the the Vine founders put this together. Yes, yes, that's it. So yeah, it, it's interesting, and 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 the, and the cash is out on PayPal if you win any prize money. So yeah, I haven't gotten there yet. Remember, no, no. I failed at game shows before, so might as well just keep failing. <laughs> there you go. Uh, <laughs> that, that's a word. I'm definitely going to be playing with that a little bit. I uh, might, might replace a little bit of my uh, uh, Animal Crossing addiction, <clears throat> um, or at least our households a little bit. But awesome, uh, Sandy Klosky, What is your awesome thing of the year? Well, I the truly the AirPods were are still my awesome thing of ever that they like changed my life. But I ranted about those the last time I was on. So my other awesome thing for 2017 is um, a thing called 17776. Um, I don't know how many of you read this interactive fiction that was on SB Nation. Are you familiar with this? I, oh, yes. No, yes, no, yes, not yes. really. So what it basically is, if you Google um, 17, uh, so there's three sevens, 17776. Um, and it's, it's basically like a, a short story, but it's, it's so much more than that. Um, and it's on SB Nation, so it's sports-oriented to start, but then it moves all these different directions, and it integrates video and just these weird animations, and it's kind of creepy, and it's kind of cool, and it's set in the future. And I just, um, you know, it, it, it starts out like I, I have, like... I'm so sorry, Steeler Nation, but I've backed away from football for a variety of reasons, but I got really pulled into Anthem just this protests. kind of thinking about it. Yes. I'm sorry, what? Is it Anthem protests? Yeah, that's not <laughs> it, but, um, you know, more about, you know, people... Anyway, oh, let's not go there. Yeah, um, but, <laughs> but so it's this amazing sort of like interactive experience that you go through. And at the time when it was released, they were releasing like one chunk per day over a, a period of time. And you kind of move through it and you're trying to figure out what, what world am I in? Anyway, it's an amazing use, I think, of the Internet and the potential of telling stories online, um, you know, making use of all of these kind of links and interaction and video. And yet it's actually fairly simple if you... Even if you didn't do all the animated stuff, you could do the video pieces and and really create this kind of interesting puzzle. It sort of shows the value of great writing and of um, clever thinking and sort of like a future kind of vibe. Yeah, it, it kind of like blew up a football page and now I'm in a calendar and it keeps asking me to please answer. I don't know if I'm supposed to interact with it or, or type something in. And it's really kind of wild and really creepy. And, and yeah. that's the experience. The first time you come in, you know, you get that. And then when you come back, you get to see all the chapters. And, and you can imagine that when this was released back in July, um, it was even more sort of mysterious. But mm -hmm. it's definitely, you know, uh, to me, it's it's just a reminder of, of the fact that the Internet is this, you know, you don't have to always interact with people. You can interact with the art. And then you can think of other ways to have people inter inter interplay with it as well. Mm -hmm. I, this this kind of takes me back to um, when Donnie Darko came out. I was fascinated uh, by their they they had kind of like an online interactive weird game that feels kind of like this, like that creepy vibe to it, you know. And you know had the mystery of what you know what that movie was about and everything. Um, and you don't see that a whole lot, I feel. And it's cool to see see something like this happening. So yeah, it, it's just weird and out there. It looks like. Yeah, it, 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 if you have not seen that, you definitely should go look. It's um, 
I, I lost an entire day at work. Uh, the first time I, I stumbled, <laughs> I stumbled. I said, seriously, if, if anyone asked me what I accomplished that day, I'm like, uh, uh I'm not sure. Yeah. No, um, you saw the you saw the future of fiction. Like, yeah, you did not. Yeah. And that's, that's research. Well, that's, that's, that's research. I was, I, I, I was I was especially interested in that just because of. Um, I, obviously doing what I do professionally, I'm, I'm curious about ways of telling stories, um, in, in, uh, and, and making the best use of, of our, our digital stuff. And that was unlike anything I'd ever seen before. It's amazing. Uh, Hey, since we got you here, Krabby, what's your, uh, awesome thing of the year? I am slow on the uptake. Um, I am, I'm not, uh, I, I don't have any problem, um, Admitting that we've had an Amazon Echo in our house for for quite a while, but I feel like uh, getting a couple, just like uh, Prime Day and different other points where when the dots have been for sale, I now have several in the house, and this is this is the the, the jump that is helping me um, look at this something beyond just a, a thing that plays music. Mm -hmm. um, specifically, getting one in the kitchen. Um, I have used it to uh, to look up recipes. All recipes does a, a really cool thing where you say, "I have this stuff. What can I make?" And it gives you suggestions uh, based on on the uh, on, on the ingredients. Um, I'm I, I feel like I discover more stuff about these every single day, uh, and it's it, it's it's gone from uh, being a novelty, which which what it which is what uh, what Alexa was for the first uh, uh, for the first public year we we had it in the house to something that's actually that's really useful. Um, I you know order stuff from Amazon, which is something I was doing anyway, but I can just kind of stand in the kitchen, it's like I need this and this and this this, and then it's done. Um, and then the other thing is. Uh, 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 Loki will appreciate this. Uh, pretty much every evening after we watch Jeopardy on television, Kelly and I will watch, we'll play Jeopardy um, on the Echo, narrated by by Alex Trebek. It's, uh, it's, it's the coolest thing. It's, they, they, ask you, they ask you the same. They ask you the same questions from the, the question of the cataracts on the show that was just was just on. Wow. Um, so it's it's just a it's a fun. That's why I thing. keep hearing about the games. Like somebody somebody on some show was talking about like like their kids were playing games on their Echo. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. A bit. Two the, things. The Jeopardy thing is the one that's that's um uh that, that's got us hooked. Um and and I'm missing it. it's for you actually Mike. So. Oh, sorry about that. We, we're right. interrupting we'll your job. We Brian, you had something? Get... Yeah, two things about the Echo that are, are pretty interesting. Uh, one, you mentioned about it playing music. Hmm? For those who have been in our old location, Millville Studios, I had a, an event there, and I put the one Amazon Echo speaker in the middle of this room, and it was this. It used to be a giant furniture store, so it's this massive building. And I put it on volume 10, thinking I would need to fill the space. The volume was so loud, I had to move it back down to like four. <laughs> And even that was was filling yeah. the entire space, yeah. and I think I actually had to move it down even lower at one point. And another interesting thing about the Alexa is if you ask her to sing, she has like an entire EP worth of music. Oh no, she's gonna start available. singing over there. There's an echo behind the tree. Oh boy, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good though. She she's she's got some good hits. Let me there tell you. There you go. There you go. All right, real quick, because just because it just came in, uh, there you go, right in front of Carmen, uh, slice on Broadway, our good friends. It's been supporting our, our awesome pizza of the year, supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting for uh, a good while with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Uh, we had to get something extra because uh, we got to get Bobby his cheese pizza. It's true. Thank yeah, we got we got to hook you that. up. We're thinking of you. Missy's always so looking we out got for some me more. Because, so because he's Jewish. Well, well, make, make, at least half apparently. So there you go. I get the whole pizza. Yeah, apparently you get the whole pizza. pizza. You have to eat the whole thing before the end of the show. Don't worry, it'll take a while. Uh, so, so check out our friends, support the show. Uh, let them know that the Awesome Cast sent you sliceonbroadway.com. Yeah, there. Oh. Uh, by the way, can I ask? Can, can I ask Pounder a question? Go for it. Yeah. If we're if we're talking about no, and this this is I, I maybe I missed this. I've noticed that there have been um, newspapers doing various you know, briefings on, on, on the echo speakers. And some of them are just text to speech, which is brutal. And I don't listen to that. Right. Um, is that something that the, the you know, that, that the PG is there, is there moves in Pittsburgh to see some news organization organizations do that? I know KDK was doing it for a while, but it was just too many ads. And I didn't want to hear Stacy Smith through a speaker. So I, 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 <laughs> I, um, why, why not? Why, why would that be? Um, I, it's, it's, uh, we're, we've talked about a, a, a lot of stuff like that. Not, not that mm -hmm. specifically, um, I kind of keep things filed away. So when it feels like there are there are people who are you know willing to listen to this, 
Um, yeah. and, and, I, and I think the digital staff is is in a pretty good spot right now to, to kind of be, um, we're, we're, we're understaffed just like everybody, but, uh, you know, yeah. willing to, to try things. So maybe that's something we would be, uh, we'd be uh, willing to get into. I mean, just like a quick, you know, you do it, you do it two minutes, uh, but somebody there, just a two minute snarky mm -hmm. wrap of what's going on. I mean, that, you know, those things are great because I do the daily briefing where I get the daily from, uh, from, from the New York Daily News and or New York Times and, 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 and AP and BBC. So it's, you know, it's, it, I always like when you can get some sort of local flavor in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. I'm going to tell Jim Semi. We have to do this. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm sure it'll go really well. <laughs> All right. Uh, I want to go to our Patreon supporter here on the line, uh, Mike uh, Mike Fedor, uh, joining us. Thank you for joining us in this this mayhem that is tonight. Oh yeah, that's like, you know, uh, I guess my uh, awesome thing would also be a not awesome thing. I don't know if you guys heard that. Uh, yeah, speaking of Patreon users, uh, uh, Patreon has decided to. Uh, redo uh, their uh, Patreon uh, uh, website, and they're going to now consider uh, uh, letting the uh, content producers keep more of what they earn, and instead passing along all that uh, fees to the payee, which is well, me. That guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, this guy here. So, uh, I, it looks like uh, they're going to be charging uh, every uh, Patreon supporter thirty-five cents to every dollar, uh, and uh, like, and of course, they're going to still take the chunk out of uh, the you know Patreon uh, uh, collectors with the, the, their normal five percent reduction and, uh, and all that stuff like that. So, I I'm considering you know like. Yeah, I'm going to have to now restructure everything that I do as a you know a patron of the arts and you know patron here to this awesome broadcast and everything like a literally awesome broadcast. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you know it, it's like oh, now that uh, uh, things are going to kind of start changing around. Like, mm. well, you know, is this going to be you know worth it? The additional you know thirty five cents or so like that for uh, to uh, you know be a, a part of the program like that and that I like because yours yours is not the only program that i have supported in the past and uh for years now and stuff like that so i'm gonna have to uh really consider uh what you know what's going to be uh, happening in the near future and stuff like that and so i don't know what you guys think about that uh, whether or not uh, uh it, are we gonna have to like find another mm. uh, venue where you know like because you know they, they want the money for you know, to uh, keep with uh, the, you know, producing the website, you know, patreon.com, you got to like have all the, you know, servers up online, you got to you know, do all this. And I think it's, I understand it's the, uh, you know, the cost of production of the, you know, Patreon website and everything like that. They got, they have employees to pay and you know, maintain this uh, thing like that. They, you know, it's capitalist society. They have to, you know, you know get uh, paid as well like that. But now that uh, they passed on the, uh, cost of uh, things toward us, the you know, you know the uh, providers here like that. Uh, it's going to be uh, interesting what happens to you know Patreon in the next coming year. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's the thing because it, it was it was all transparent and, and it came out of the creator side. And I, and I also support a good number of podcasts as well because I want to contribute to the communities as well. And now uh, you know realizing each one of those is going to be an extra fee on top of. So now, you know, if you're like, oh, I'll throw a quarter at this, throw a dollar at this, throw a dollar at this. Now that's exponentially grown if you do that for 10 podcasts, right? So now you have the budget for that as, you know, some people, you know, it's, it's nice you can throw a buck at something you feel like you're contributing, right? You know, versus, you know, we don't have, you know, all of us 20 bucks to throw at something. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's kind of the same situation here. And, uh, and, and in the end, the contributors are the customer, Right. And now you've pissed off the customer, you know, and, and that's that's now a problem the creators have to consider. So it'll be interesting to see how this shakes out. I'm still kind of learning the ins and outs of all the changes uh, through uh, Daily Tech News Show, who, you know, pretty much is the, you know, the, the uh, pioneer in this, I think, doing it very well, are dealing with that. I mean, that's their livelihood for that show. And now they have to adjust and realize people are going and figure out what that does to you know, this business that they have running off of something like that. Thankfully, we're not quite as dependent for what we do here, but still it's something we've been trying to grow. And this is a big kind of uh, question mark on the future of what we do that. So hopefully we'll have answers for you in 2018 on how that's going to happen. So, but, but thank you so much for, for kind of keeping up on that and still contributing to the show there. So thanks Mike. Um, okay. Over. 
hanging out over here with the pizza. Did you eat all that cheese pizza already? It's gone, man. It's gone? You should have put the camera on this guy. Jeez. Nice work, Bobby. Man, that is impressive. Bobby Cherry, what is your awesome thing of the year that is not cheese pizza? Uh, cheese pizza is my favorite thing every year. So jumping back to uh, Uncle Crappy, but on the flip side, for me, it's the Google Home and the all of the smart devices. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was here last month, John had recommended uh, the iHome uh, smart plug outlets and so i have like 10 in my house now it's an addiction (laughs) (laughs) um the weekend of black friday i ran to target thanksgiving night and picked up like four google minis so every room is outfitted with one um the bathroom is soon to be getting one that i just bought recently um and i'm picking up more ihomes uh this weekend so i mean it's it's fantastic you can walk in you can see what's connected um, you can be at work and, and think, did I, did I turn off the lamp? Did I, mm-hmm. you know, is the Christmas tree off or, you know, whatever the case is, that's the big thing was the Christmas tree. That's why, if you remember, that's why <laughs> yeah. I bought it was to light all of the lights. Um, so that's really my awesome thing. I know, you know, Google home came out in November, 2016, but it was really this year that it's been, um, promoted and it came out worldwide this year. So and they've added a lot more features to it too. Yeah. So I just got mine free with the purchase of my phone. And I completely agree. I'm ready to start buying the plugs. And if anybody cares, the original and the mini are both on sale on the Google store for at least, I think the mini's $29 yeah. and the larger one's $79. 79. That's, that's that's, actually, that's, Google's running that sale everywhere through Christmas. Um, so anywhere you buy it, that's what the price is. Which do you think is the best out of all of the different devices that are out there? Oh, no. Now we're going to. Because I, I used to like have all of the like the streaming devices back before like anybody was getting into like the Apple TV and stuff. I had sure. all of them, so I kind of was able to, to see which one I liked better. What What do you think? So I no longer use my Apple TV. I want to give it to someone who needs it because I just don't. My brother just bought a, a house. A home in need. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> my brother just bought a house, so I want him to have it because he uses Apple. I don't. Yeah. Um, I'm migrating everything to Google these days. The Pixel you mentioned was yours. That might be my 2018 thing of the year. Um, you know, for me, Chromecast is is where I'm at these days. Mm-hmm. So my whole you know sphere is within Google. So that's kind of where I'm at. Do you ever miss holding a remote? Because that's one thing. Like I do like a Chromecast, and I have one, but I still hang on to the uh, the Roku because of the actual clickable remote. You oh, know, I you need ha- to... and you have to interrupt your Animal Crossing in order to. Well, that's <laughs> the problem. Is I need to get to a point where Verizon is on. Google, so I can just say, hey, hey, Google, turn on, you know, the Hallmark uh, Channel or something. Somebody you know? just got the Hallmark Channel on their Chromecast out there. <laughs> Congratulations. I, 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 as, a, as a person that now has, has both, I will say it seems like Google's device is better at answering questions and doing some of the compound stuff. I feel like Amazon has been a little bit longer in the home automation stuff so they seem to have better integration but i think the the one recommendation i gave was anything you're buying to integrate with them make sure it works with both and then it doesn't matter mm-hmm. yeah. yeah amazon mm-hmm. works with more services yes. right now but yeah, they'll yeah. even out yeah well <laughs> is anyone concerned though about like your uh the always on microphone situation no, and it's worth it nope yeah it doesn't bother me at all <laughs> your entire life being broadcast to someone you don't know you're helping the nsa csa i don't when CIA, i originally I got the xbox one so many of my friends are like are you crazy it has a camera and i'm like what do you really think goes on in my living room every <laughs> i said you'll see me sitting there playing I, video games i think it's my more, wife I think it's more hey what's happening in your living room that you're asking me that right <laughs> i mean i have a security well, camera i mean i have a you know a, a camera and i have because, others just because you have nothing to hide doesn't mean that you should uh He's right. so yeah, good. yeah, you're of right. Course. You're of right. Course. Of yeah, course. it bothers me, but I mean, I'm not going to not buy the the device it's, because I'm worried about that. It's, My, the, it's the price you pay, and I, and I feel like for them to single in on me, and and, and I do understand it. It's it's a it's something I opt into. It wasn't forced upon me, um, and I feel like I get more out of it than the the fear of that data being out there. And the amount of, obviously, it would take AI to pour through all of that content. Mm-hmm. That's why 
I'm not overly personally concerned. I understand why others yeah. might be. Yeah. That's also the reason that those devices aren't in bedrooms and the bathroom and, and things. That, they're more <laughs> in public locations in the house. Um, you can get there from throwing your voice from the kitchen to set a timer, um, things of that nature. But I do not, I mean, again, personal preference, it's an opt-in. And, and you can also quarantine it to sections of the house. Yeah. John Carmen, what's your awesome I, thing? I figure the more Amazon knows about my sexual preferences, the better it is for oh, me. Good. Oh, good. <laughs> Shopping. Shopping. Um, <laughs> Makes it easier. Yeah. Recommendations are spot on. Uh, so we have two mentions of the AirPods. And so I'm going to go with uh, the, uh, the Pixel. Buds, Google's Pixel Buds. Really? I've yeah. heard really tough things about those. Uh, well, you either haven't heard of them or you've heard really bad things about yeah, them. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much how it yeah. goes. But because they're they're so 1.0 and, um, you know, I wouldn't go out and buy a pair now, but they've launched this year and I'm just excited about where this technology goes. If you have a Pixel, they do live translation. Mm -hmm. So the Universal Translator from Star Trek is... Almost there. Has started. Just that one more thing exists. on our tricorders that we carry. You can talk to a waitress, a waiter in another country mm -hmm. in their, in your language, and it will translate it live to their language, and it will translate their speech to your language live. It's not great. Um, it uses Google Translate, which is pretty good. Mm -hmm. I mean, we use that. You, you can do a version of that a little bit with a phone, you know, kind of step But this by is step. In, in the butt. But the idea directly, that it's directly right. a little... Like like and, like it's not and like, there's less here, speak into this right and know? there's less delay yeah so it's almost the universal I mean you know it's the 1.0 of the universal translator and I think that's really interesting technology how good does it pick up on dialect because I'm just thinking someone in Pittsburgh <laughs> saying things like you know Ian's jag offs and things like that is it going to be able to translate that to know, somebody what, what is that in type Spanish it in, type type Yins into Google there you go yeah uh, yeah, yeah yeah Google might figure it out there true. You go. Uh, my awesome thing this year has been um, the realization of how persistent internet is. That a, 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 the last weekend I did uh, two major streams, uh, one for Ham Art, Handmade Arcade at the David Lawrence's uh, Convention Center. I don't know if you've tried internet, paid for internet, which is seventy five dollars a day, by the way, uh, but it's not enough for a live stream. And uh, and I worked with the IT guy and everything, and also I had another live stream with uh, Public Source over at the Homestead Library. Uh, you know, the one up on the hill, up from the waterfront and everything, where the music hall and everything is, right? And they don't have that great of internet either. So in both cases, and we've talked about it, I have the unlimited plan on AT&T, and I basically, my house runs off of it at this point, right? Um, and, uh, and this is what I ran. Major client productions <laughs> off of for Handmade Arcade and uh, Public Source. And it worked Flawlessly. Now, I had good bars in those places that I was in. Other places, it's not going to work as well. I was very lucky, and it was not the first. And there was both situations where typically we would go figure out what the internet situation was, and we knew we were in bad situations, and we're like, hey, we'll make this work. At least we'll record it if everything goes bad. So I mean, that was an understanding. Right, it wasn't a do or die. We have to stream this, or we're you know we're getting screwed, right? Um, but the idea that that is where we're at, and most of the places I end up have that internet speed, you know, all the way to Cleveland, we had it, right? You know, granted we're on the highway and stuff. You know, I, I how many places traveling over this last year where I have my laptop and my phone and I can do work wherever. I'm not looking for a Starbucks, you know, to be able to do the minimum of my work at this point. Um, you know, which is sad considering some of the hotel Wi-Fi's I end up in. Um, so, I mean, I just think it's interesting that, you know, the, you know, I, I'm getting better internet on my phone than I am the Comcast internet here in this office that I pay for business class in some cases. <clears throat> so I and feel you, your pain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have a similar situation going on. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I just, just an interesting kind of uh, level of where we're at from back in the days of, I mean, I think most of us here started on dial-up of some sort, is that in some way, right? Oh yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. Uh, so yeah. Modem. What, oh, what's that look at? Twenty-four hundred baud modem. Oh yes. Nice. Well, Brian. Yeah. So I started out with dial-up, and I remember I was in the age when people were just starting to get DSL, the rich kids, and I had Evercrack, 
and I would try to run across a village in Evercrack, and, and I would freeze, and then I would end up on the other side of the city, and I would be eaten by a rat. It would say, a rat has killed you, because my internet was so bad. However, Dark Forces 2, Jedi Knight, if you, I called myself a master lagger, because you could use the internet to your advantage, and someone would be like trying to hack away at you with a lightsaber, and you'd be on the other mm -hmm. side of the field. Oh, dude, that's how you ran that's Quake. Great. That's a Quake, you, 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 the lag in a shotgun blast was something you had to calculate for. Yeah. You know, and it's a running gun. It's a Doom, you know, Quake, you know, first-person shooter. No, I, yeah. Oh, been there. Well, and then Absolutely. There's the people that definitely manipulated that lag switching was was big. I remember on Xbox 360 and oh, yeah. all those networks, which just mm -hmm. made me crazy. All right. So I want to get the predictions here. Loki has got a hard out because he's got to get on the actual TV and not the Internet TV. Uh, so first of all, we need to uh, we can at least uh, praise or shame at least half of the predictions from last year. Uh, so first of all, let's shame the people that are not here. Uh, Doug Durda of uh, Should I Drink That Yin's Love Barbecue could not make it tonight. He was trying um, something about layaway night. I, I, you, it's the holidays. He predicted that Google Plus will finally die. Okay. I, the, it's, still it's still there. Sort of, it's, still there. It's, it's, I mean, it's on life support. It's on life support. Nobody uses it. It's just kind of curled up in the corner, right? I'm, I'm wondering what, well, okay, what, Jim? what... Sorry, go ahead, Jim. No, I was just going to tell you about it. the thing with Google+, Plus, which was fascinating, you know, because it, 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 I know that when they went to... When I was working for the station up in Boston... And, you know, we were working, our web people were working with them for, S, you know, SEO and, and, and some other partnerships, whether it was advertising related for the website. And they were trying to strong arm all of that company's TV stations to have all of their talent establish some sort of beachhead on Google Plus because they thought that, you know, that was going to be what was going to drive people to Google Plus, your, your, you know, your, 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 you know, your teleprompter readers. Um, on, on Google Plus, and, and obviously all of us were like, "What the hell is this crap?" And, and nobody, yeah. you know, nobody used it, and it, it's dead. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, is there is there is there a back end Google service that's actually powered by Google Plus in, in on the back end where they can't? If they shut it off, it's going to break like presence. Like, and have they separated? <laughs> yeah, have they separated Hangouts or anything? Yeah, like or have, that, like which so we, we work on, but you do not need it anymore. Yeah, you just need an email address. So, so yeah, so yeah. maybe yeah. just they, they're There's leaving the power the on stuff because for like shared accounts for um, YouTube channels. Yeah, that still goes through Google Plus. Yeah. So I'm guessing there's they're, they're leaving the lights on because there's electric <laughs> running to the building. Yeah, exactly. The only thing I like is that it gives me birthdays in my Google Calendar still mm -hmm. with all the people I'm connected to. When that goes away, I don't know what I'll do. I still don't know. <laughs> I, I still don't know what Google Plus is. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever uh, heard of Bright Kite? <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> Oh, geez, on a flip phone back in the day. Riz, Riz plays games, Wrestling Mayhem Show, predicts that the Nintendo Switch will revolutionize gaming. We were talking about this before the show. Uh, Kraus, you were really interested in that. Well, I don't know. No, get a mic on you. I don't know if I'm really <laughs> interested in it. I like the idea mm -hmm. of having the same console that you sit in your living room and play, be yeah. able to walk around with you. I just, I like, for me, I'm... I was a Nintendo kid, obviously, very mm -hmm. early on. Well, actually, I was an Atari kid to to really date myself. But that was my, you know, 2600 was my first yeah. console. And this one, I don't know if it's revolutionized, but it's keeping, we we're just talking about, it's keeping pace with PlayStation 4. Yes. So it's definitely, it's it's probably the biggest, It's I think it's doing better than the Wii, which was our last big hit, really. I would agree. So I, I, I revolutionize, doing very well. I think it's going to make so everybody take a look at the mobile console market a yeah. little harder. Yeah, I and mean, hey, they've been in in iPhones. Um, it's we... it's the first console that everybody in my D and D group has bought the year it came out. Oh it, wow! Like they have they have Playstations, they have Xboxes, but they buy them down the line. It's the first one that everybody bought. The year it came out. Jeez. Uh, I'm wondering. That is the best nerdiest I... recommendation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, that wins exactly. it. Exactly. All right. Uh, moving on here. I, I predicted that Twitter will almost definitely not be an independent company by the end of 2017. I got three weeks for somebody to buy them. Although you could say they're an extension of the U.S. government. And I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, we, could play, we could take out the collection real quick. Yeah, 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 we got, we've got 40 people in here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. Um, we just can't use Patreon. 
Uh, so, <laughs> um, Cynthia, you you I had predicted. A prediction. You, um, you no, no, you do, had do a. You have the wording of it there. Yes, the wording yes. is very important. I think. Okay, you thought that VR video will not be the next will not be a thing next year. As in, it's not going to go any. Uh, it's not going anywhere. I gotta make sure I get this precise, and we won't know why. You also don't be- didn't believe that it will get past cardboard. Um, there's a oh, there's a cursor blocking this. Uh, it'll be at least another three years before we see any solid movement with VR. Okay, so I'm gonna say that that was I I don't I'm not gonna give myself a very good grade on that. I think there's been a lot <laughs> more games can come out. A lot more activity than mm-hmm. I really anticipated, which I'm glad for. I think it's really cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm more accessible. And I mean, we're just talking about like a backpack you could buy for $3,000 to play your VR, like on the move, I guess. Um, and there's a lot more coming out. So, all right. So that's what we did last year. Let's see if we can impress ourselves in another 365 days. Uh, Jim Loke, you, uh, like I said, you got to get on the TV here very soon. So uh, we want to go with you first to get you in here. Uh, what what is your uh, bold prediction for 2018? Oh, you're you're muted. I think he's muted. Yeah, he's the professional guys. He's the he's the real. <laughs> normally, have somebody, I have normally somebody else cutting that out for me. Um, I think I think Vine two. I think Vine two is going to uh, it's going to be a failure. Vine two. <laughs> Did you not see the? Did you not see the? Uh... Yeah. No. Where's what's this fine too? No, I, I don't know this. There are. Uh, um, Rob, Rob Johnston has had a permanent erection for the last couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> because the um, yeah, Vine too. It's it's gonna. Uh, they're they're teasing it with the V and a little too. I see you have it pulled up there. Yeah, yeah there it um, is. But, but I, I feel like I feel like we're at the point now where it was such a it was a good concept at the time. But you have so many other video mechanisms, and, and, and I just don't think the whole six second. You know, I think I think they've abdicated that throne. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a, I, I, it's 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 past guys. They're trying to really have. I mean, you're going to have these kind of vine hipsters, Rob, um, yeah. <laughs> Johnston, for instance. And uh, man, geez, did he, is he going to the launch party? Because like, I feel like that he belongs there, right? So. Oh, Rob! Rob already took a picture of the uh, the uh, storage facility or the storage shed, which he had all his mine props, and I guess he was ready to fill it all back in down in Nashville. Oh, geez! But, uh, <laughs> another trip to Di- another trip to Disney. You're yeah, right. That's awesome. Uh, so Vine Two will be a failure. Is his uh, his take on that? Um, and we gotta make sure we get the wording right for these ones. So. <laughs> Nine two. That's perfect. Two, there you go. All right, Jim. Okay, uh, you, what do, you you're on the TV. Uh, people can find you online. Um, you got your own show Fox, down there. Fox5DC.com. Yeah, tonight eleven thirty. Uh, we're 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 uh, we're all about Alabama tonight. And apparently, Roy Moore's horse. Roy Moore showed up to vote on horseback today, and his his horse now is a Twitter account. So um, <laughs> his you know. horse was named Sassy. It, it oh, is named Sassy, Sassy the horse. <laughs> oh boy. How old is that, that was also horse? my nickname for you, Will. How? That's true, and I wore it proudly. <laughs> how, does, how does the Daily Show do these days when these are real stories that are happening? Uh, but anyways, I know, right? It's insane. Yeah, yeah. Well, good luck with that. Good to see that you're doing great down there with your show. Uh, and, Thanks, guys. Uh, I appreciate it. Good to see you all. Everybody check it out. Fox 5 DC. Look for it online. They are definitely online. So you can We are it. online. We, yes. 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 Thanks a lot. All right. Um, uh, Will. Let's go with you. What's your prediction for 2018? Um, okay, so I, I, my my awesome thing of the year was kind of a bummer, and this is also going to be kind of a bummer. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, but no, it turns around. It turns around. So net neutrality. Oh. Um, they're going to they're gonna push through net neutrality, and it's going to be a whole kerfuffle, and everybody's going to be very upset, right? Mm-hmm. Um. The ISPs are going to do what ISPs do and try and change the structure. But what's going to happen is that people are going to, like, customers are going to drop like flies. They're going to lose so much business that they are going to roll back these unpleasant business practices. And um, and it'll kind of all be for naught. I agree. Hmm. Okay. 
Well, there you go. That's uh, my prediction. I, I think a lot. I think there's a lot more people willing to live without internet um, than they're banking on. Interesting. Hmm. And there are those hipsters that are anti-internet, anti-electronics as well. Sorg is not one of those people. Well, keep not, in mind that when you say they're going to live without internet, you're saying without high-speed internet, like on a Wi-Fi. But there's still phones, and I think that maybe kind of you know paralleling with what you're saying there phones will like take over more like self self perception and things will be more of a player, which I, I think is very, very possible. I can totally buy that. You know, my co-host on the culture cruise, which is uh, my, my uh, museum review podcast, he doesn't own a computer or internet. He just uses his phone for everything. So I definitely see your point there. We have a guy yeah, at work. That might be the thing that breaks it. Thing. That's actually kind of mildly hopeful. I, I kind of like that. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it turned turn it around in the end. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, Mike Pound. What is your prediction for 2018? Um, I am going to choose to be uh, optimistic, uh, partly in due uh, to the the current political climate, regardless of what the folks in the White House say. Um, failing is not really the case, and and in fact, there's a lot of growth in uh, on the digital side of journalism, and and and. and People suddenly are are becoming uh, are understanding how the business works a little bit more, and we're willing to to subscribe to some of these services, and that's a that's a good thing for me and for everybody else in the business, and and ultimately it's a good thing for you guys as well. I think this also gets helped by uh, by uh, whether it's experimentation, uh, what we can do to take advantage of um, improving digital platforms. Um, the, the stuff that, that Jim and I talked about um, uh, is is a is a great example, but I think I think um, my business and access to it, uh, the, the the digital side of journalism, uh, is going to continue to build in 2018. Awesome. I, yeah, I think it's heartening to see things like I mentioned public source uh, earlier. I've been you know seeing a lot of their materials because you know again they're a funded yeah, outside source that's doing. Deep journalism, a lot of people aren't doing, and and uh, they have they have a pretty good leader too. In, in Mila, yes. she was my boss at the PP for a while. She is awesome. And and by the way, she is uh, the most professional in the stand up. I was really impressed that they yep. did all that off the cuff yep. that we filmed last week. Uncle Crappy, so. hmm? is is that a cookie or a Charlie? Uh, that was Charlie. Oh, okay. Cookie was climbing around on me earlier. That was that was Charlie. <laughs> Charlie was actually trying to eat the microphone. We're talking um, about, we're talking about cats for anybody out there on the audio version. Yeah, just sorry to make clear. That. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Cynthia uh, visited us in. Oh, there it is, right there in the back. <laughs> uh, what is your cat's prediction for 2018? <laughs> Uh, my cat, my cat thinks microphones should be tastier. There apparently, you go, there you go. Uh, What's yours, Cynthia? My prediction, um, so just this past week, Amazon Prime Video is finally available on Apple TV. It was promised, you know, way back when the new Apple TV came out, and now it's and there. It's great. And I think that that's a harbinger, so I'm predicting a couple things on that. You know, this is the big, there's going to be a sort of a continued escalation of the streaming war between the Google and the Amazon and the Apple, but Amazon and Apple are now buddies a little bit more like even oh look you can see one of my cats there too yeah um uh, that's why i picked you next <laughs> um that uh yeah so so you can even now like see what's up next on your apple on your amazon prime mm -hmm. through the main apple interface and so i feel like that that they're they're in now sort of date is what I'm thinking. So I think we're going to see Apple TV available for sale on Amazon again and um, sort of a continued evolution of how those things roll out. And in the meantime, if you want to get your Amazon uh, Prime, uh, Bobby has a uh, Apple TV that goes to a good Wait, who had, the, who had the Apple TV, TV to go Bob, to a good home? Bobby Sellers. That was Bobby, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, I might regift it to my brother. There you go. I hope he, he doesn't listen to the show. No. You're good. you're all right. All right. <laughs> um, and by the way, I, I don't think I've watched any of my Amazon Prime for like almost a year because I didn't want to plug my TV stick back in, <laughs> and I just watched the entire season of The Tick, and I'm just finding I watched Grand Tour. I'm not even that much of a car person. I just find it hilarious. They killed like three celebrities. It was great. Um, but anyways, <laughs> Mike Fedor. What uh, is your awesome thing? I'm sorry, no, wrong segment. What's your prediction for 2018? I'm going to predict that uh, we will be now living under the United States of Disney. 
I think Disney is going to uh, pay down the national debt and they will uh, have come in on some kind of uh, constitutional crisis and uh, they're going to say, uh, hey, Donald, let's get together and uh, let's just... Uh, Trump or uh, duck? Uh, <laughs> yeah, like, uh, <laughs> we were all thinking it. Yes. <laughs> No, I, all right. I, I, that was just you know. I, I think that uh, Disney s- still isn't uh, done with buying things. I think that no. I, this is my this is my real prediction. I think they're going to uh, at least have one uh, major purchase uh, of uh, either a, a corporate entity or anything like that in uh, the uh, next year. Do you think beyond Fox? Because supposedly Fox might be happening this week. Mm-hmm. Do you think? Uh, yeah, uh, they might. They could uh, eye up on uh, Time Warner. Okay, I think they, they they were trying. You know, they were trying to get that merger with uh, Comcast and you know, uh, Time Warner and all that other stuff like that. They could they could be uh, thinking in like into a more you know distribution uh, age and stuff like that and trying to get uh, their content. Uh, now that they got all this content, now that uh, uh, they'll want to uh, uh, sending it directly into your homes that way. Absolutely, I I am. Uh... For one, uh, looking forward to pay another five dollars for a Disney only, because it's got my Star Wars, it's got my Marvel. Of course, I'm paying for it. Let's be honest about it, right? Um, no, absolutely. And and just to clarify, because because Kraus asked, yeah, uh, Disney uh, supposedly has been on again, off again, off again talks for buying Fox, which I think is everything except for the sports and the news. Is that it was it was it was like I, I, they didn't want it or it's not part of it, the deal or it's separated in a weird way, um, which also everybody, of course, geeks are getting excited because now Marvel gets the rest of their stuff back. Did I hear a cat? Yes. OK, because it sounds Sorry. like it was in the studio and it's really weirding me out. <laughs> but, all right. Uh, I think I got all of you guys on the digital uh, back in the studio. Um, let's start. Let's start opposite. John Carmen. All right, is it is it cheating to say that Apple HomePod finally launches? Is that too easy? <laughs> you know, I I think I want to get because you never know. God, that would be awesome. You never well, Amanda Narcissi says HomePod will be a high ticket item and do more than it first let on. That's a pretty good one. On Siri, uh, it wouldn't. That's su- hers. That's not mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would it, that wouldn't surprise me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why we're. I'll waiting. go with I'll go with one that's a little less. I don't want to have a guaranteed a next year uh i think we're gonna see uh the first amazon key burglary okay all right yeah let's see what happens that's gonna be <laughs> let's test this out i'm not gonna do it i'm not gonna <laughs> burglarize someone <laughs> you know just somebody to I mean, right? we, um did you apply for amazon flex you know or give something, me yeah or? give me a notice before next year's episode i'll go rob a house just just to be right <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> bobby terry one are you on amazon key <laughs> i am not thank god um you know i think for next year um i keep thinking i, I asked a, I posed a question to facebook and um someone had said elon musk so i think <laughs> something i don't know what but he he's going to have some breakthrough next year whether it's with Scent. <laughs> he, he said sent off mic by the way whether it's you know whether it's through spacex whether it's through tesla um or the boring company or the boring company you know whether it's i don't know what but uh, there's something there's something emerging there that that he's, he's yeah, there's something to... on his secret island that he has not unveiled yet is what you're saying maybe he will be the uh bailout for the United States. I don't know. <laughs> it, so there you go. Okay, so Bobby's prediction is Elon Musk does something. <laughs> <laughs> Not just some no 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 no. <laughs> something, like new. Chases, something, something new. Big. Some, something big. Something big. I was cheating. <laughs> <laughs> a, a major breakthrough. Like right now it's been uh, right now it's been like little things that I don't think we, he's really gotten to the point where it's it's there yet. Rockets you know? and tunneling yeah. isn't enough for you. <laughs> no, it's no <laughs> self-driving cars, electric car. I mean, I mean the roadster, uh, the roadster on the, the roadster on the moon, or the roadster car, on yeah. Mars. If yeah. the roadster yeah, 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 yeah. roadster lands on Mars, then I'll be pretty happy. Battery, I don't think it's happening this year. It's, it's not Southern it's, Australia. It's, it's, it's not, not next year, deal. but yeah, uh, I, I don't know. I I don't know. I think he's had a lot of setbacks with with SpaceX though this year. You know, so I think there's. We had a couple. 
steps forward too. True, so. but, but yeah. he did get the rocket to land on the barge. Yeah, well, yeah. that's true. We put a rocket on a boat. Come on, <laughs> come on. <laughs> and they did. Uh, oof, don't want to get political with this, but they did just. The, the president did sign something for NASA to go back to the Yesterday, moon. Yeah. yeah. Um, linked in with these private companies. Right. So there's that too going on. Or to the moon for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the other couch. <laughs> because I... Don't want to linger on that anymore. Uh, <laughs> Chilla, what's your... I, I think we're going to see another huge, huge drop-off on PC technology, like the old-school laptop desktop. Like the fact that my laptop from five years ago is just as fine for my work as... That, that ba- and the fact that when you look around the room, there people are surviving on their phones, mm-hmm. their tablets. Mm-hmm. I, think, I think it's going to be... I think people are hoping for a revival of the the PC, and I don't care what operating system you're running, if it's Mac OS, Linux, Windows, whatever. I think we're going to continue. I think we're going to see another huge, steep decline, especially as the mobile technology gets more advanced. People depend less on their home internet and are willing to speak speak with that kind of voice around, mm-hmm. I'm going to drop my cable, I'm going to drop whatever due to ne- neutrality. So I think... I think it's going to be a, a definite downturn for, for PC technology. I think it's just getting segregated. People are realizing I only need X device and there's so much variety. Look at the couch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is the future right here. So awesome. Brian, that commercial where the kid says, uh, what's a computer? Because he's on his tablet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Brian, what's yours? So I've got two, if I can. Uh, one, I'm not I think stop you. <laughs> we are all going to, uh, not all of us, I think some of us are going to start turning into cyborgs. And I, I say that because... I tried a couple of years ago, and it tried? didn't take. Yeah, well, yeah I've that, got Google, the watch, that Google Glass did not take. And the watch, um, when I sleep, it'll tell me how long I've slept, and it'll divvy up that sleep into uh, deep mm-hmm. sleep, restlessness, and things like that. There's already talks about putting implants in people for mm-hmm. medical history and things like that. That's already something that's being talked about. I think you're going to start seeing that in certain countries. I think we'll be one of the last ones that you'll see that happen in because mm-hmm. we're the last ones that embrace anything in the United States. Uh, but I do think you'll start seeing some of that in other countries. The other thing, and this might be viewed as a negative, but I, I kind of view it, I, I have mixed feelings on it. I think there, you're going to see some regulations governing drones. I don't think you're going to have the freedom uh, among the drone technology as you do now. I, I think... Hasn't it been pretty regulated? Like the FAA th- has rules and things like that? So. Uh, yeah, but it's I don't know how much it's enforced. I mean, you see yeah. people just flying drones everywhere well, and... It kind of creeps me out because you can have like somebody using a drone with a video camera coming up to your like bathroom if you've got kids or something. I just I what are know. they doing in Millvale with drones? <laughs> uh, not in Millvale. Uh, we I don't have know the in Dormont. No, can, can we get I'm, the one I'm, that? Can I'm we get just the, saying that there's some risk to it. Can we get the one that was not hanging over my head when I was on a shoot? And like it's like the guy was stalking me with it when he was filming. Oh, yeah, it was like he's like, dude, can this not be twenty feet above my head? <laughs> exactly. And I just think there's going to be more rules to govern it, or at least it's going to be more strictly enforced. I think yeah. we're going to see that. Like, in, well, like in maybe not. Year. Like the rules are there, but we're actually going to have like we, we we talked about like Japanese like like trained hawks to attack the drones <laughs> and and nets and things like that like you think like those maybe start to be implemented well there was a woman i, I spoke about on my show the other day and that's who, the that's the river's edge by the yeah, way river's river edge, talk it's on uh, monday mornings on the stream sunday go. nights at 7 p.m on the video and we have to complete edge, the plug. Live. <laughs> but uh, anyway she had trained a team of cats to steal things from her neighbors she literally had ninja cats that she had trained to go throughout her we have candidates and steal in, the, in the in the hangout right now yeah, yes. exactly. Yes, so, I them? mean, your, your bird theory is not really that far off. That's okay. So Krause, what is your... I think AR is going to be a much bigger deal next year mm-hmm. than even um, VR is now. Um, you know, Apple has plans. Obviously, Google, we were talking about it earlier. They just turned it on on my phone. And that's just what these little stickers. I think we're going to start seeing games and and other applications utilizing those VR 
things or AR things. Sorry, not VR. Well, AR. It's interesting that you're mentioning that because Amanda is in the chat room and she's talking VR shopping. Like Amazon will have aisles you can virtually walk through. Yeah. Yeah. So she was right on, on board with, you, with that. that one. Awesome. Do you have a prediction, Missy? More Bobby Cherry on the show. People are going to do stuff. Funny, I was I was going to say that we're going to see John Carmen on the show more often. Oh. <laughs> My efforts to ban Bobby Cherry have obviously failed, so I would say more Bobby Cherry is a solid prediction. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Oh, geez, I haven't thought about my prediction. But, oh, look at the hugs. Look at that. They're buddies. That's why we paired them together. There you go. <laughs> you good? Okay. Um, my pre- I I forgot to think of one for myself, but uh, I, I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with um, I think podcasting is going to get de-emphasized in 2018, which sucks because I'm a podcasting company. But uh, but no, I think I think like what we're seeing here with Facebook Live. I mean, we are seeing more people on our Facebook Live interacting than we do in 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 the podcasting side of things. I think um um. People are going to start. Uh, I mean, we've already seen people kind of gravitating towards the ESPN podcast, and and what the hell was it? Welcome to Night Vale is going to be a TV show that I just saw. I just saw a trailer for an Amazon show called Lore that also came from a podcast. Like it's going to become an entryway and, and start to get scooped up with these and 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 um, become more of, I guess, a novelty again in that case. Or it's uh, much like Brian, you do a streaming radio show. And then you end the podcast, right? Like sure. it's in an addition to it's not the primary, maybe in a lot of cases. I'm going to disagree with you completely. I, I think that people, we live in a world where everything is, is going to on demand to, mm-hmm. to some extent. I think streaming radio is, it can be more useful in music, but I think on the talk side of things, people want, they want that on demand. They like the live where you have the Facebook live, but they want that on demand functionality where they can listen to it whenever and wherever they want. And I think you, you look at night, uh, night, night Vale, vale yeah. going to video. TV never killed radio. Facebook live is not going to kill podcasting. There's a different way of thinking when you listen to something, it's a different way to communicate with people that reaches people on a more personal level. Mm-hmm. Uh, to watch something on video, it's cool, but you don't connect in the same way that you do. When, your, your mind thinks differently. And it's harder you, to access. Well, the, maybe. It's, the ad that I'm going to bring into this is it's going to be the same thing between DVR versus live television. Live mm-hmm. television is still a thing. So is DVR and other similar services that allow you to watch it later on demand. So I don't think it's going to be an issue. I think it's just going to kind of separate the audience. Yeah, yeah. And I don't and think I, it's going to. Yeah, I think it's going to because I, I, I the the crux of that is just seeing the interaction and people are gravitating towards the events. TV starting to figure this out or happen for a bit. That's why people still watch live TV, right? Um, bringing things into things like this. Um, you know, I, I think I think it's going to be. It's not going away, but it's just going to be de-emphasized, and it is going to separate, and certain people will. Get Probably, to. but I think you go to different different mediums for different different objectives. For example, uh, a show like my show, which you know I'm talking about current events and things like that. That's something you know I would run a watch live. Mm-hmm. Um, something like you know fishing without bait. Does it really matter if I listen to it? No, live? no. You could go back to the first episode or interview series or something like that, like exactly. we do. So versus this show is very timely. It's so. kind of like uh, Netflix versus the news. You know, I don't mm-hmm. want to hear yesterday's news, but does it really matter if I binge watch Daredevil at the end of the season? Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's better that way. And then something like Chelsea Handler doesn't work there. So I, on a daily show, if it does get de-emphasized, I think it's going to be a blip on the radar. I think it's going to be like when okay. Sh- when Shatner did stuff. My dad says is a TV <laughs> show. Um, I don't think this is going to last real long because to every uh, to, to a lot of what we're talking about, it come back around. It, it's going to come back around because people aren't going to need that live mm-hmm. piece of it, except for Isn't, something like uh, the news. talking. Oh, yeah, I'm go sorry. Ahead. Go like, ahead. Uh, isn't uh, the Talking Dead a podcast? Or, or uh, it was more a TV show, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a TV it's show. TV show. Yeah, like, yeah with Chris Hardwick. like a podcast feel to it. It, it is, but it, but it also has yeah. Chris Hardwick, who does Nerdist podcasting and everything. So I think that's you know they're taking that and, and TVizing it, you know. So um, which seems relatable, you know, they're taking a concept that works and putting it on TV. So 
for easy, cheap content. But, but it's weird because that's one that I would like to watch, but I just don't have the time. And mm-hmm. if it was a podcast, I would listen. I would, yeah. I would listen every week. You're right. You're right. <laughs> I completely without agree. fail because mm-hmm. I would love to watch that show every week, but I can't because mm-hmm. of my time constraints. And there are also different podcasts, just like you said. There are some podcasts that I like to watch the video version of, mm-hmm. and there are others that if I get get the video, great. If I can't, I'll take the I'll take whatever I can get. And, and maybe this is just I think it's informed from my own experience. So it's, it's personal anecdote because I realized that most of the podcasts I listen to do have video versions, and I'm completely I open the YouTube app more than I do my podcast app, and it's a it's on it since I have the Google Music. I have the background play, so I'm listening to them in whatever environment. And if I'm like talking about something visual, I can pull it up and see what they're talking about. So it become like it, it's like this different kind of mediums in sync. See, I'm the opposite. I never am at a place long enough to sit there and watch a video. So if it's oh, you're always video, on the move, I am. So if it's only on video, I just <laughs> won't watch it. And so I tell people because. Bad. If I yeah. am sitting down, yeah. If I'm sitting down, I'm doing work from for my station, and mm-hmm. then at that point, I'm always walking. Even in my spare time, I, I walk the river trails. I'm always moving. So for me to watch a video, it, you know, I'd be tripping. I told you how much of a klutz I am. You imagine me trying to watch a video while while walking. So well, if you had AR, you could watch the video. There you go. And walk. There you yeah. go. And right on that All right, note, well, guys, let's go around. Uh, of course, we, I think we plugged the River's Edge a lot. <laughs> so go rivers edge rivers edge pgh.com and check out everything going on there john chichilla's chilla Ch- chilla tech.net net chilla, tech. net. chilla, chilla on, on the, the twitter Twitters. crazy kraus on the twitter uh that's with the k's yeah. all the k's yes uh john carmen google john carmen twitter i'm sure I yeah google i mean john you're the one that'll come up right yeah. i mean you haven't done anything in new jersey i have yeah <laughs> <laughs> And I, I apologize for the dead air when Bobby was hugging me, but I didn't want you to get the explicit tag. Okay. All right. Bobby Cherry. Where can people find you? Go Bobo. Dot, or go Bobo. Dot, go Bobo on Twitter. G-O-B-O-B-B-O. And, 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 and search him on the internet, too. He writes things. I do write things. Yes. You want to plug where you write things? No. No, you'll find them. You'll find them. That's <laughs> up for you. This is a scavenger hunt, guys. All right. Also, Cynthia Classy, uh, Shift Collaborative, of course. Anything else you want to plug out there? Not today. I'm not in a plugging kind of mood. <laughs> <laughs> Unplugged. Uh, Will Rutherford, PanelRiot.com, SawtoothWilly.com. Yep, those are the things. All right. I didn't know if you had any other project I wasn't aware of. Sketchbed every once in a while on his DJ Lunchbox on the Twitter. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, Uncle Crappy. You can check out beer me on the Post Gazette. Oh, you're you're muted now. You're now you're doing that thing. You, you're doing that low key thing. It's nope, all the media nope, guys that out. keep muting well, themselves. Yeah, you guys. <laughs> they have people that do this for them. I think. We'll have him plug. Well, we got beer me. We'll plug for him. <laughs> He's waving at us <laughs> and uh, <laughs> our Patreon. <laughs> Of course, our Patreon supporter, Mike Fedor. Uh, what do you want to plug here today? Other than just uh, Confessions of a Hockey Fanatic and uh, the Michael Fedor Show out over on YouTube. There you go. Thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you, everybody. We have set the, I think, Sorgatron Media uh, co-host record. Uh, and we'll see what we can, if we can we can break it on the Wrestling Mayhem Show in a few minutes here. Thank you so much. It's been an amazing 2017 in awesome cast history. What are you... <laughs> Uncle Crappy has a cat with him. Yeah, is this is this cat? Is this cat turn the mic on? Is that what's oh. going on over here? <laughs> oh, there he is. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> uh, thank you. It's been a great uh, 2017. Looking forward to 2018. Again, big move here in the studio and with with this. And uh, we're you know obviously the environment has changed. Hopefully we've uh, improved the show around it. And uh, we we have some big plans for 2018. And uh, what we're doing with Awesome Cast. So looking forward to that. Thank you, everybody that supported the show. Awesomecast.com. Thank you, Jim Loke. Go f- watch, find a feed of Fox 5 and see him at 1130. Uh, I think I believe that's every weeknight. And uh, thank you to producer Missy for putting up with all this. Yeah. <laughs> I was waiting to berate you because you forgot me. Yes. So I'm getting you on the last <laughs> official show of the year. So. Saving the best for last. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for everybody. You have been our awesome audience. This has been an awesome 2017.
Have an awesome week and an awesome holiday as well. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.